Welcome to Willow Glen Emotion. My name is Kevin C. Swanson, and I'll be your host. In a special two-part series, we will be exploring a 153-year-old institution that has played a major role as the number one supplier of education, engineering, computer science, and business graduates to Silicon Valley, the world's high-tech capital. San Jose State University is a major comprehensive public university neighboring Willow Glen in the heart of Silicon Valley. It is the oldest state university in California. Its distinctive character has been forged by its long history, by its location, and by its vision. In this show, we will be looking at San Jose State's blend of the old and the new, the traditional and the innovative. As we stand here on Tower Lawn in the center of campus, let's start by stepping back into San Jose State's history. As we look into the history of San Jose State University, we have to have exactly the right person to do that. Today we have Annette Nellen, who is not San Jose State's official historian. Annette, welcome. Thank you. So what is your official title here at San Jose State? Uh, I'm a professor in the College of Business. I actually teach graduate level tax courses and direct our graduate tax program. Which has absolutely nothing to do with history. Well, the history of taxes, but <laughs> which I try to bring in whenever I talk about the history of the campus. But um, actually, I got interested in the history. The late 1990s, um, just sort of was kind of curious why we weren't celebrating actually a day in our history given the age of the campus. And it turns out actually it, we had celebrated in the past a history day. It was always May 2nd. It was uh, Founders Day, but we had somehow along the way stopped doing that. Yeah. So this has become a passion of yours. Yeah, I, I find it quite fascinating. And it's like you're finding buried treasure because you can find bits of the history to talking to people, especially when you um, give campus tours to alums, always learn things. And our library is a rich source of all kinds of pieces of our history. So share with us, you know, what is San Jose State's history? Where did we come from? How did we start off? Well, BOP, I know that it dates back to 1857 because we do emphasize that date on some of the materials that are sold here and all that. But in 1857, it was actually a city-run school in San Francisco called Men's Evening Normal School. They held classes Monday nights for the existing teachers who they thought could use a little bit more education, <laughs> education on how to and teach training. and even what they were teaching. Because that's a long time ago, 1857, and you know, not everybody actually had finished school or gone through you know, we've, what we they view as K-12 education. Right. So we started in San Francisco. How did we end up in San Jose? That's a very good question. Um, in 1862, if it was May 2nd, 1862, the state legislature passed a resolution saying we would have a state normal school. And historians, well before me, uh, say that that city-run school then became that state normal school that was still in San Francisco. Okay. In the late 1860s, the principal of the school and the state superintendent of instruction decided they wanted to go to, I'm quoting from their report, yeah. but there was more quiet and fewer temptations. <laughs> so I think that just says something about San Francisco, you know, in the late 1860s. Also, the, the student body was primarily young female, like 16, 17 years old. Right. And apparently they would help them find housing, but they didn't have dormitories. They meant finding housing in somebody's housing, you know, somebody's house. I think maybe they were just running out of enough places that they would be able to house some of their students. They also had male students as well, but they found housing for the female students. So they wanted to, to move. Yeah. So they moved here to this location? Yes. Actually, several cities actually wanted to have the normal school there. I think that's because it would indicate you're going to be a growing city. Yeah. San Jose enticed the uh, students and the teachers to come down. They sent 190 train tickets up to the school saying, come down, we're going to show you two tracks of land in San Jose and see if you like one of them. And we are sitting on one of them right now called Washington Square, which the city of San Jose donated to the, uh, the normal school so they would locate here. So, Now, is this the first normal school in California? Yes, uh, because when they, in 1862, said we're going to have a state normal school that was the Cali called the California State Normal School. In 1887, the legislat legislature passed a resolution saying by that time there was a few more normal schools in the state, such as in Los Angeles. Um, later ones in Chico, that they would all be called state normal school, had their own board of trustees, and I think because they all had the same name at that point, state normal school, you would see our records showing back in that eight, late 1880s and 1990s 
it would, we would call ourselves San Jose State Normal School or State Normal School, comma, San Jose. Yeah. Now, the other normal schools, they became the CSU system? Yeah, most of them probably did turn into other colleges. I would think the one at Chico probably eventually became um, CSU Chico. The one in Los Angeles eventually became UCLA. And then, of course, this one became uh, what did we today call San Jose State. But San Jose State has been in that title really since at least 1887. Yeah. You know, what, what are some of the... Um, recognizable names or famous people that come from San Jose State through our history? Well, they date back quite far. One probably of, of greatest note graduated in 1872, and that was Edwin Markham. And he then, of course, went on to become a teacher and actually was a principal up in a school in Oakland. But he went on to become a great literary star in that in 1899, William Randolph Hearst published one of his poems called The Man with the Hoe in the Examiner, and that got printed many places, kind of world known, translated in many languages, and it really changed his life because by 1900 he was living in New York where he stayed, um, and he was just very, very well known in the, in the literary world. Uh, we've also had, trying to cover a variety of um, topics that might <laughs> interest people, in 1939, I'm skipping a few decades, but 1939, Gaylord Nelson graduated from what would, would then been the Teachers College, and he went on to become Senator and Governor of Wisconsin, but also by better known as the founder of Earth Day, which we still celebrate. The first one here was uh, 1970, celebrated um, pretty well on the campus here as well. Uh, we have other, in, in the literary world, so Amy Tan I think is fairly well known. We have obviously a lot of uh, great athletes have uh, graduated from here, probably best known as uh, Tommy Smith and John Carlos in the 1968 Olympics. The gold medal winners. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, many people that have gone off to claim the fame in the business world and uh, journalism. We've got a lot of famous alums. Where does the name Spartan come from? When was that? Uh, when was that title given to us? You know, that, that's that's a good uh, question. It's it's back, I think, in the in the in the 1900s. But I know at one point there was a there was a, a, an election. They were going to vote between the Spartans and the Golds, and the Spartans won out by a few. A few, few I, votes. I believe I read it was 10 votes. Okay, that was pretty close. We were 10 votes away from being the Golds instead of the Spartans. Right, so instead of saying <laughs> go Golds, we say go Spartans. Well, Annette, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate the uh, opportunity to learn a little bit more about the history of San Jose State University and go Spartans. Okay, very good. Thank you.